Okay, mates. Time to hit the sleeping bags. Right, Dad. Really soon. We're just each going to tell a story we read first. Okay? Well, all right. But make them snappy. It's getting dark. Sweet. I'll start. So there was this shepherd dude. And he got bored because he had to hang out and watch his sheep all day. And he had, like, a lot of sheep. I mean, he had black ones and white ones and brown ones and black ones with white spots. And So the wolf ate up all the sheep. And the shepherd dude never cried wolf again. The end. Cool story. Even though it was kind of long. Okay, my turn. That's it, mates. Bedtime. Sorry you guys didn't get your turn. I've got an awesome story for every night of this camping trip. But I don't know how to make them short. No worries, man. Tomorrow, we'll read one of your stories, and I'll show you how to recount the whole story in just a few sentences. What do you mean, recount the story? To recount is to tell the events and details of a story in the order they happen and in your own words. So you can pause the video and write that down on a piece of paper as your notes. Recounting a story means to tell the events and details of a story in the order they happen and make sure, guys, it's in your own words. Yo, Gio, remember how you said you'd show me how to recount a story in just a few sentences? Here's a story I really like. Cool, man. Let's read it. I noticed that there are little speaker icons beside each paragraph. I can press those speaker icons to hear the story. How Beer Lost Fire. It was the beginning of time when the world was new. Creatures of many kinds lived where the land grew thick with soaring trees, spreading bushes, and twisting vines. Of all the creatures, Bear was the tallest and most powerful, so Bear owned fire. Wherever Bear wandered, he brought fire with him. One morning, Bear lifted his nose and sniffed the air dreamily. A faint scent of honey was drifting toward him. He lumbered among the nearby trees, looking upward for a beehive, but saw none. I noticed that the word lumbered is light blue, so I can click on it and it gives me the definition. So he lumbered among the nearby trees also means he moved along heavily. I'll have to search farther, Bear thought, but the day was warm and he didn't want to carry fire with him. He set fire down on a patch of bare earth and followed his nose. The scent grew stronger and stronger until at last he spotted the bee zooming straight to its hive. With a swipe of his sharp claws, Bear broke open the hive and buried his face in the sticky honey. But when he had licked up the last drop, the sweet taste on his tongue only made him long for more. Bear wandered farther and farther, sniffing the air for the scent of another beehive. And swipe means a sweeping movement of a person's hand or animal paw. Okay, so that means he's, he knocked at the beehive. Meanwhile, fire was hungry too, but not for honey. Its flames were burning low and beginning to sputter. Help, feed me, pleaded fire. Without more wood, fire would soon die, but its master bear was by now far, far away. As it happened, man was picking blueberries from a bush nearby and heard fire's weak cries. What do you need to eat? Man asked Fire. Twigs, gasped Fire. Dry twigs, then branches, then logs. These seemed like strange food to Man, but he hurried to gather twigs, branches, and logs. Quickly, he fed Fire the twigs. He laid them on the north, west, south, and east sides of Fire. Sure enough, Fire's weak blue flames turned yellow and rose a little higher. Pleased with his results, man fed fire the branches in the same way, and then the logs. Fire roared gratefully to life, its flames jumping and stretching. 
blazing orange and gold. Soon, the sun set and the night grew cold, but Bear did not return. Man, who had no fur coat like Bear's, was grateful for fire's heat. He slept by fire all night in deepest comfort. And so the next day, and the next, and for many days after, man tended fire and kept it fed. Then one morning, man awoke in the shadow of Bear, who had returned at last for fire. From his weeks of feasting on honey, Bear had grown bigger than ever. Man lay frozen with fear, but fire leaped up in anger. Where were you when I lay hungry and dying, hissed fire? You abandoned me. Now I am leaving you. Bear reared up fiercely, but fire flung shower upon shower of red-hot sparks at him. Finally, Bear slunk away knowing deep down that fire had good cause to turn against him. So slunk means moved away from somewhere quietly. And since that day, fire has belonged to man. Wow! So man got to keep fire because man took good care of fire. Yeah, excellent story. I know, that's my problem. When a story is really great, you don't want to leave anything out. Well, some parts of a story are more important than others. So if you recount just the most important parts, it'll still be a good story. Okay, short is sweet. My new motto for recounting stories is just the most important parts. But how do I know what's important? One important part of the story is the characters. A character is a person or animal in a story, but not every character is important, only the ones that play a big part. Yo, I know a character that's very important. Bear. His name is even in the title, How Bear Lost Fire. And the author tells a lot about Bear right from the beginning. See? Of all the creatures, Bear was the tallest and most powerful, so Bear owned fire. Wherever Bear wandered, he brought fire with him. Yep, Bear is important. Now, how about the bee? <coughs> Help us out. Reread the highlighted part of the story about the bee. Then, think about the whole story. Reread all the pages if you need to. If Sweet Tea wants to recount this story in just a few sentences, is it important for him to tell about the bee? Decide if the bee is a very important character in the story. Click yes or no. Well, I remember from the story that they really only talked about the bee that once. So I'm going to say no. You're right. The bee is only mentioned in one sentence. Its role is not very important. Sweet Tea could definitely leave out the bee to help keep his recounting of the story short. Let's take some notes. That'll help Sweet Tea remember what's important to include when he recounts the story. Good idea. For the characters, we already know that Bear is important. Who else? I know. Fire. Whoa. Fire isn't a character. A character is a person or animal in a story. Actually, in this story, fire is a character because fire talks and acts like a person. Like in this part, help, feed me, pleaded fire. And fire is important because this character plays a big part in the story. Then man is an important character too, because man saves fire. Like here, quickly he fed fire the twigs. And man gets to keep fire too, see? And since that day, fire has belonged to man. Help us out. Click the important characters to add them to our notes. Okay, we've got our important characters. But when you recount a story, no one's going to understand what's going on unless you also tell the setting. What's the setting? The setting is where and when a story takes place. I spot the setting. Write this down. When? The beginning of time when the world was new. Where? 
where the land grew thick with soaring trees, spreading bushes, and twisting vines. Slam dunk, dude. Hey, wait a sec, guys. So don't forget, when you're recounting a story, start with your important characters and then move on to the setting. When did it take place and where did the story take place? What we wrote down about the setting, those are the author's exact words. When we recount a story, we're supposed to use our own words, right? And besides, aren't we trying to make this short? Good point, Luna. Those are the author's exact words and definitely way more words than we need. Reminds me of Sweet Tea's overloaded backpack. Hey, I'm gonna need all that stuff. <laughs> Whatever you say, bro. But meanwhile, let's lighten up the way we describe the setting of the story. Right. So look at the when part of the setting. Instead of saying the beginning of time when the world was new, we could just say long, long ago. That's a lot shorter and it gets across the idea in our own words. Now we need to shorten the where part of the setting. Can you help us out with the where part of the setting? Read the highlighted description in the story. We want to describe the setting without copying the author's exact words. And we want to make it a lot shorter. Click on the question mark. Choose the best way to describe the setting of the story. So again, I see my little speaker icon, so if I can't read it myself, I can just have it read to me. In a place with soaring trees, spreading bushes, and twisting vines. Mm -hmm. It sounds a lot like the author. Outdoors. In a land with many very tall trees and lots of other kinds of plants all growing close together. In a forest. Um, well... Where the land grew thick with soaring trees, spreading bushes, and twisting vines. I think that sounds like a forest. Let's try it. Now we know what character Sweet Tea should include when he recounts the story. And he's got a short, clear way to describe the setting. But what about the event? I know, right? An event is something that happens in a story. So the events are what make a story a story. Definitely. Gotta add the important events to our notes. Let's do a close reading to find them. I see the first event. One morning, Bear lifted his nose and sniffed the air dreamily. Uh, hold on, man. Just like with the characters, not every event in a story is very important. And we want to keep it short. Remember our motto, just the most important parts. I think this next part has a very important event. Listen. He lumbered among the nearby trees, looking upward for a beehive, but saw none. I'll have to search farther, Bear thought. But the day was warm, and he didn't want to carry fire with him. He set fire down on a patch of bare earth and followed his nose. The really important event here is that one day, Bear left fire alone to find honey. Yeah, that's important for sure, because that's how all the trouble started. Give us a hand. Click the event to add it to our notes. Read the highlighted text. Decide what's the most important event in this part of the story and decide the best way to say it. Remember, we don't want to copy the author's exact words and we want to keep it short. <laughs> Choose the best way to describe the most important event in this part of the story. So I can hit the speaker icon to hear it read to me again. I'll have to search farther, Bear thought, but the day was warm and he didn't want to carry fire with him. He set fire down on a patch of bare earth 
and followed his nose. The scent grew stronger and stronger until, at last, he spotted the bee zooming straight to its hive. With a swipe of his sharp claws, Bear broke open the hive and buried his face in the sticky honey. But when he had licked up the last drop, the sweet taste on his tongue only made him long for more. Bear wandered farther and farther, sniffing the air for the scent of another beehive. So now I need to find one that shortens that event. So... Bear saw a bee, and the bee led him to its hive. Bear wandered farther and farther, sniffing the air for the scent of another beehive. After finding and eating some honey, Bear kept wandering farther to find more. Bear found some honey and ate up every bit of it, and it tasted so good that when he was finished, he wanted more. So he kept on wandering to find more. Ooh, sometimes you're not sure. You just have to try one. And if you don't get it right, then we can always listen to our um, lesson to see what we need to fix. But I think what I'm going to choose this time is, hmm, Bear wandered farther and farther, sniffing the air for the scent of another beehive. I'm going to try this one. Uh -oh. Not quite. This Not choice quite. does tell the most important event, but it includes some details that aren't important. Find another choice that does the job with fewer words. So I chose one that would have talked about the part that's highlighted, but I also chose one that had too many words. So we know that be, uh, Bear is sniffing and saw the bee. And he looked up the last drop of honey. So, hmm. Let's try after finding and eating some honey, Bear kept wandering further to find more. There we Score. go. This choice is the most important event because Bear's not returning causes a big problem for fire. This choice is short too, and it doesn't copy the author's words. It's very important that we don't choose or don't write exactly what the author is saying. It has to be in our own words. Hey, we're on a roll with events. How's this for some more important events? Man became the new owner of fire. Fire started dying because it needed wood to eat. Whoa, those events are important, but you've got them out of order. Man doesn't become the new owner of fire until the very end. That event comes way after fire starts dying. And some other really important events happen in between. That's right, bro. When you recount a story, you have to tell all of the most important events. And you have to tell them in the right order. I've got an idea. Let's make an events chart. That'll help us be sure we get all of the most important events and put them in the right order. Great. For the beginning part of the story, we've already figured out the important events. One day, Bear left fire alone to find honey. And after finding and eating some honey, Bear kept wandering farther to find more. For the middle part of the story, Sweet Tea just gave us the first event. Fire started dying because it needed wood to eat. So what's next? Want to pitch in and help us out on this? Read the highlighted text. Decide what's the most important event in this part of the story. And decide the best way to say it. Remember, we don't want to copy the author's exact words. And we want to keep it short. <laughs> Click on the question mark. Choose the best way to describe the most important event in this part of the story. So remember to go back and reread the highlighted part before you choose your answer. You can click the speaker icons to help you read. As it happened, man was picking blueberries from a bush nearby and heard fire's weak cries. What do you need to eat? Man asked fire. Twigs, gasped fire. Dry twigs, then branches. Then logs. These seemed like strange food to man, but he hurried to gather twigs, branches, and logs. Quickly, 
he fetched fire the twigs. He laid them on the north, west, south, and east sides of fire. Sure enough, fire's weak blue flames turned yellow and rose a little higher. Pleased with his results, men fed fire the branches in the same way, and then the logs. Fire roared gratefully to life, its flames jumping and stretching, blazing orange and gold. So now we have to choose the most important event. Man was picking blueberries from a bush nearby and heard fire's weak cries. That's not enough. When man heard that fire needed wood, first he laid twigs on the four sides of fire, then did the same thing with branches, and finally with logs. That's too many words. Man heard fire call for help and fed it wood. That sounds good. Man thought that wood was a strange kind of food to eat. I'm going to try this one. I think I'm getting the hang of zooming in on just the most important parts. How about you? Read the highlighted text. What do you think is the most important event in this part of the story? And remember the rules. We don't want to copy the author's exact words. And we want to keep it short. Choose the best way to describe the most important event in this part of the story. Soon, the sun set and the night grew cold, but Bear did not return. Man, who had no fur coat like Bear's, was grateful for fire's heat. He slept by fire all night in deepest comfort. And so the next day, and the next, and for many days after, man tended fire and kept it fed. Fire warned man at night, so man kept on feeding fire for many days. That sounds right, but let's check the rest. And so the next day, and the next, and for many days after, man tended fire and kept it fed. That's the author's words. Man was not covered with fur like Bear was. That's not enough detail. After the sun set, the night turned cold, and man had no fur coat. But he spent a very comfortable night sleeping next to fire, so he fed fire for many days. It sounds good, but it's still too long. I'm going to try the first one. Hey, we're in the home stretch. Sweet Tea already gave us the very last important event of the story. Man became the new owner of fire. But something else happens right before that. Read the highlighted text. What's the most important event that happens just before that last event? Remember the rules. Don't copy the author's exact words. And keep it brief. Leave out unimportant details. Choose the best way to describe the most important event in this part of the story. Then one morning, man awoke in the shadow of bear who had returned at last for fire. From his weeks of feasting on honey, Bear had grown bigger than ever. Man lay frozen with fear, but fire leaped up in anger. Where were you when I lay hungry and dying, his fire? You abandoned me. Now I am leaving you. Bear reared up fiercely, but fire flung shower upon shower of red-hot sparks at him. Finally, Bear slunk away, knowing deep down that fire had good cause to turn against him. Where were you when I lay hungry and dying, hissed fire? You abandoned me. Now I am leaving you. Oh, that's the author's words. From his weeks of feasting on honey, Bear had grown bigger than ever. That's not enough detail. Bear came back while man was asleep, and man was scared when he woke up. But Fire was angry at Bear for leaving and threw sparks to drive Bear away. That's a bit long. When Bear returned, Fire was angry at Bear for leaving and threw sparks to drive Bear away. So, can't be the Arthur's words. Needs to be short. I'm going to try this last one. Yo, Luna. Making an events chart was a great idea. 
Now I can recount the whole story straight from the chart. Well, actually, not quite. When you take notes in an events chart, sometimes you need to make some small changes before you can turn your notes into a story. Like, what kind of changes? Well, for example, take a close look at the beginning. See anything missing? Uh, we've got. One day, Bear left fire alone to find honey. After finding and eating some honey, Bear kept wandering farther to find more. I know what's missing: the setting. We didn't say when and where the story takes place. Good catch, dude. So we need to add a sentence about the setting. That was this: long, long ago, Bear lived in a forest. And I thought of something else too. We didn't say that Bear owned fire. Definitely important. Let's add it. Guys, I added a couple more words to my notes and wrote out the story. Are you ready to hear me recount it? I'm all about my new motto: just the most important parts. Great. And when are you going to apply your new motto to our overstuffed backpack? <laughs> Never mind, sweet tea. <laughs> Let's hear the story. How Bear Lost Fire. Long, long ago, Bear lived in a forest. Bear owned fire. Wow! Look how much shorter Sweet Tea made that part. One day, Bear left fire alone to find honey. After finding and eating some honey, Bear kept wandering farther to find more. Soon, fire started dying because it needed wood to eat. Man heard fire call for help and fed it wood. Fire warmed man at night, so man kept on feeding fire for many days. When bear returned, fire was angry at bear for leaving and threw sparks to drive bear away. So man became the new owner of fire. Way to go, guys! We figured out how to recount the whole story, but still keep it short. Let's be sure we follow these rules when we tell our stories tonight. Help us go over the rules we've learned. Check off each rule for how to recount a story briefly. Tell the setting, when and where the story takes place. Tell the setting, when and where the story takes place. Tell about just the most important characters. Tell about just the most important events. Tell all of the most important events in order. Leave out unimportant details. Don't copy the author's exact words. That's how to keep a story short and sweet. Are you ready for the big hike? Your dad said the trail is five miles and steep. I'm ready. It's a good thing we kept our story short last night and got to sleep early. Yeah, we're gonna need our energy today. Uh oh, what was that? It's Sweet Tea. He's really into his new motto, just the most important parts. So he finally decided to remove a few unnecessary items from his backpack.